In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert an Apple II joystick for use with a modern computer so you can play your Apple II emulator. If you're like me, you remember the days when you could hold the joystick in one hand like this, the most comfortable way to hold a joystick in my opinion. Nowadays, you get something like this or something that's too big to hold in your hand. Of course, you can't use an Apple II joystick with USB directly because the pin is different and it works on a different principle. So I will show you how to convert it over. A lot of these old Apple II joysticks have bad pots and they're 150K pots, hard to find, and they don't work with USB anyway. So we also have a lot of joysticks with old buttons that no longer work. and I've gone to Radio Shack and I've got part number 2751566 momentary push button switch. And I've also got an Ion game pad. You'll notice that this has an integrated directional pad. That'll be important and I'll explain why later on. So the first step is to cut down the joystick lever and then we'll attach it to the directional pad of the game pad. So after cutting the lever off the Apple joystick, I put threads on it using a 10 24 inch die. That's number 10 and 24 threads per inch. You can see the end is now threaded. And then I got a piece of aluminum strap from the hardware store. This is three quarters of an inch wide by an eighth inch thick. I used a number 25 drill bit to drill the center hole and a 1024 tap to thread this piece of aluminum in the center. I then popped open the ion game pad. took out the D-pad and I drilled holes in the D-pad to match up with the holes in the piece of aluminum. As I mentioned before, it's important to have a game pad which has an integrated D-pad instead of four different buttons and this is why because you couldn't attach the aluminum piece to four separate buttons, but anyway, we've threaded the 3 seconds bolts through here and test fit it on here to make sure that it will work. And then we'll take it apart, assemble it through this piece, and you'll see the results. So we put the D-pad back in the case, attached the aluminum piece, screwed it down with some three thirty seconds nuts and we added a 1024 nut here when this is in use I'm going to put some Loctite on there to make sure that it doesn't come apart and then we just snap it back together and now it's time to drill a hole in the joystick cover to accommodate the gamepad And the next step is to cut out the button mounts. So we've removed the plastic from the inside. I've made these plexiglass washers, square washers, that will hold the buttons in place. And then screw the nut on there. And then we have two buttons. Also, I used a Dremel tool to carefully remove the plastic where the hinge pin was. So now we have the joypad side and the button side. And we're going to solder the wires for the buttons on now. Okay, so you'll notice that the solder point for switch one is here, so 
you'll put a dot of solder right there. And then this is the solder point for switch two. I put a little flux on the metal just to make it easier. And we solder our wires on for our external game buttons. So soldering button one. And now we're soldering button two. Okay, here we're hooking up a ground wire. You'll notice I put it through the back side of the board for strain relief and found a good spot right here. Here we have the wires hooked up to the buttons and you can see we have this coming from switch number two and this coming from switch number one and the white wire is the ground and you'll notice that the ground wire is connected to both switches via this blue wire and before we put everything together let's go ahead and test it we've got the testing program in Windows try button one or button two button one and the joy pad works perfectly so let's put the rest of it together so here's the finished product and I've secured the game pad inside with uh, a plastic substance known as polymorph or friendly plastic pellets which you can get at Michael's. I heated it up in double boiler and put it all around to hold the game pad in place. I also put a uh, zip tie head on here and then covered it with the plastic so that it won't pull out when this is assembled. And then I put some foam in here to keep the board from rattling around. We put it back together and we're done.